Today on The Educator, it's the first day of June and we're feeling good about ourselves. Now, is confident mostly about your personality or appearance? We're diving deep into building confidence for males and females. Plus, do you keep the change before you offer or tip to make yourself feel better? Find out why. Then we're sharing ways to make our students feel important because we want them to know that they matter. So let's get started. Hello, hello, and hello, and welcome everyone to the educators. Yes, it's the first day of a new month, so goodbye to May and hello to June. Yes, yes. Now, Andrew is not here on today, but he will be back soon. So, we all love and miss you so much, Andrew. So, let's get started, shall we? So, according to fatherly.com, depending on the situation, um, everyone's confidence flirts, it, you know. Um, so the article it goes on to say, when it comes down to it, when, when it comes down to you need to shake up the routine and inject a little positivity and an accomplishment in your life to maintain a constant thread of feeling good about yourself. So let's take this a step first, shall we? Um, it's confidence mostly about appearance or personality and do you think the trick to building confidence is the same for males and or females but let me answer the first part is confidence most mostly about appearance or personality well for me i mean it's quite a little bit of both about appearance and personality with me about appearance um, you know, especially now into these days, um, the world that we are living in, it quite just depends on, you know, your appearance and, and, and the way that you appear yourself when you are out into the world. Let's say, you know, you are in a job interview. The way you are presented towards them, if you want that job, you need to look presentable. Like with me going to a job interview, this is not presentable. I know that. Um, but you know, it it just depends, like I said, on the type of situation that you are in. If you're a job interview, like I said, you need to, you know, boost up your appearance. You need to you need to look professional. If you're just out with your friends, you know, casual, yes, like this. Um, um let's say at a funeral okay let, let me dive into this at a funeral it just depends on you know how with me i want to you know if i go to a funeral you know because with me i look professional everywhere i go it doesn't matter if i'm you know if i'm subbing or if i'm going to church or if I'm, well, if I'm, you know, just like going shopping or anything, I'm careful. But I always look professional as positive as I can because you don't know who's going to run up into you. You don't know that, you know, if you're looking for a job or this and that, you don't know who's going to come up against to you. So, yeah, but back to the funeral part, I mean, at this point, you know, you could just be whoever you want to be, where would it, if, if you, if you feel fine, go to it's not like this. That's totally you want to be all straight like this up. And that that's by me. That's by me. All right. Now let's head on to the personality part. Yes, confidence can, you know, with your personality. Uh, like like I keep saying, it just you got it just depends. It just depends if you are, you know, if you are friendly, that's good. If you're not friendly, well, then some things you are going to happen, according to me. Okay, now, and it also says, do you think the trick to building confidence is the same for males and or females? Well, I think quite yes, because with males, uh, and, and I'm just going to be honest, we don't really care. We don't, we don't care. 
we, we, we just don't care as we feel it because they care. They care about, you know, what they look, how they dress, how they perceive the people. And with us males, well, I'm just say some males because I'm not into that category. Some males, well, a lot of males, they just don't care. They just don't care. And, and, and they, you know, but, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. And, and they, they really don't care. The bottom line, they just really don't care as to with females because females, you know, they get all the attention, they get all the glory, they get all this and all that. As to us with males, you know, we're, we're, we're just there, you know, present in the moment, right? I forgot to turn off my video. We're just there into the moment, right? Yeah, so it, it like it says, it just depends, you guys, it just depends. So coming up next on the educator um, tip etiquette, you guys, keep it a change before you offer. Tipping to make yourself feel better. Does that, are you into that category? And am I into that category? Well, you need to find out right after this break. So stay with me and watch the educator. on Instagram where a father says his daughter made a hundred and ten uh, dollars on her first lemonade stand. Ooh, good, all right. And the father goes on to say it turns out the customer were handing her five and ten dollar bills and his daughter was actually saying thank you for the tip and keeping all the changes all right now this little girl is a hustler all right so has anyone ever kept the change before you told them to and do you tip others to help them out or to make yourself feel better hmm hmm um uh, hmm. see you guys uh, okay well well has it has anyone ever kept the change before you told them to to be honest with me no to be honest no and do you tip others to help them out or to make yourself feel better to be honest, you guys, I really don't. I really don't because, it, uh, as you guys should know by now, or are getting to know, I'm not a, I'm, what's it called? 
I'm antisocial. That that's that's who I am. I really I really go out. So this this see I wish Andrew was here for this because he probably has to say to this or to here, but I I can't really relate to this topic here because I really go out to because I, I to me well as of now you guys I'm not that big of going out you know to restaurants because I'm still a teenager. Uh, well, I still consider myself as a teenager, which maybe I am an adult. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm antisocial. I don't consider so yeah, I can't I can't answer, I can't do it into this. But yeah, if but if you guys are the type, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. If, uh, do you tell others to help them out? Of course you should. Of course you should. You, you should help them out, but to also make yourself feel better. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, that 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 should be good for you as well. You know, to make yourself feel good, uh, because we want we want that from other people, right? We want to, you know, make us feel better, and also, uh, excuse me, to the um to the person we are attending to, because you know they had a stressful day, you know, they in 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 so. So yeah, all right, you guys. So we have to take a break. I know you guys. I wasn't no help into that topic right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but we have to take a break. But there's more the educators right after this. Okay, so stay there. Watch the educators. some more topics okay now check this out we know the best way to end conflict is to avoid it altogether am i right yes but what happens when you find yourself in the middle of a tense argument that you just want you know you just want to be over with because on Quora.com, one user asks what is the best line to end an argument so damien What's your go-to? What's your go-to when you're like, all right, we got to wrap this up. I don't even care anymore. What do you say? Well, what do I say? What's my, I, I don't want you to think you guys, what is my go-to line to end an argument? Because I rarely be in arguments, but with me, oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back to school because I used to have so many arguments some of your arguments with, with, with one of my best friends. Um, and I don't know if he's watching my show, if he's watching this, but if he is, hey, I hope you're doing great. Um, and we need to catch up sometime. Um, but I don't have help. 
I went in there quickly. I will, I will be like, okay, I, I'll be like, okay, okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. That's the thing. So that's my go to. I'm finished. I'm done. It, it, it's it, this is a waste of time. And it, it is. It is. I'm, I'm looking back on to those moments now of the arguments that we used to have. It was very silly, you guys. It was so very silly and not. <sighs> You guys, we, 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 we was high school, okay, we was high school students, so, yeah, and the types of arguments, it was just, I don't know who would even start up the arguments, sometimes it would be me, and sometimes it would be him, and it just, it just, I don't know, we, we, we used to have arguments quite almost like every day, and this would be at lunchtime back in high school. When we was in middle school, I remember it would be some quite other times. Sometimes, oh, I remember this. Oh my gosh, I don't know if he remembers this. Um, but that one time we had a big old argument at lunch back in middle school. And I remember like the group of friends that we had, they was all like shocked. And they was because I was with me, I was getting very heated, you guys. Uh, in that type of conversation argument that we was having, I remember the, the, the group of friends that we had, they was all like coming towards me, like, Damien, you, you need to come to like, get, uh, you stay your bill right there because I have something to say about all of them to be out of because they was coming at me. It's like, Damien, you need to come back. Well, you need to stay into your lane because these have nothing to say. But they were trying, you're not trying to help. You need to stay up there and finish. You feel how about that? This is and whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that was me, guys. That was me. Yep, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, he's probably like, oh my gosh, that was Damien. He, he, I thought this, I, I thought I knew this person, Andrew. That was the old maid, okay? That was the old maid. That was back in middle school. Now, of course, still am that type of person. But yeah, that was me. So yeah. Um, so you guys, um, to sum up this, because we have to go to break, um, to sum up this topic, um, try not to get into your argument, you guys. Okay, try not to. But if 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 you if by some chance if you do end up into an argument, just you know your go-to one, like I said earlier, is you know you have to stay calm. You don't have to keep okay. What the rip is in the blood? Stay. You have to stay calm and took and click. Be like okay, I'm through. You know, try like throw your voice too. Like okay, I'm through this. I'm not going to die into this i'm finished i'm going to leave because 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 this this this, this right here I, I, I can't do anything something about like something along that line okay you have to stay calm that's with me you guys you have to stay calm okay um so yes you gotta stay calm stay calm okay so right after we come back from break you guys i am going to be sharing some ways to make your students feel important because we need our students to feel important you guys we need our students to feel important because they matter they matter and we need it okay so that's coming up on the educator so stay there
and welcome back you guys to the educator <laughs> oh my gosh i don't know why i am laughing in this episode like today i don't know it's just something just make me i don't know i probably was looking over something before i start recording you guys just makes me uh, start laughing and I'm, i apologize i apologize you guys but all right let's dive into and i'm quite smiling a lot into this episode uh, so let's dive into this topic right here you guys i am going to share you guys six ways to make your students feel important okay so hundreds of br hundreds of brilliant educators they weigh in with tactics to make kids feel like important members of the school community so let's dive into this into the best advice okay so when setting priorities the prevailing wisdom seems to converge on the same fundamental insight don't sweat the small stuff if you have to have you guys for that of course separate the weight from the chaff and don't make mountains out of molehill so inside the classrooms that advice falls short according to hundreds of teachers who recently responded to um, eating utopia social media question, which is, how do you make your students feel important? And I am going to read some of what you guys have to say. So um, one user, one user said, allow them to use their voice and agency and day-to-day -day lessons, activities, and events. All right. Um, another user said. My hashtag broadcast media students run the entire daily news show of their own. Scripts, graphics, videos, teleprompters, audio, uh, um, video buzzes, so on and so on. And if I'm absent, I tell the sub they know what to do. They know how important they are. Yes, okay, I like that there. Um, another user said, by actually listening, and I love this, um, listening to them and validating their experience and ideas and then adapting lessons to include those live um, um, live experience. I love that there. I love that there. And one more says, validate and being honest with them. Preach, preach. When students share, we need to validate their contribution and honesty to show them respect and create a sense of trust. This helps to create an environment where they can feel safe. And this is what I said back in my other show, Digital Education, where they feel safe, supported, and encouraged, and also giving them positive feedback. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because you guys, we've got to listen to it. And like I'm about to dive into, one of the ways is to listen. We got to listen, guys, to our students. We need to because they have a voice. Like I said a couple of episodes back, they have a voice. They matter. We need to hear them. We need to hear their thoughts. We need to because okay. So the first I have is to listen, talk, shout it out. We have heard it from educators a thousand times. Observing even the simplest rules of social etiquette pays big dividends in schools. The word listen and its many variants appear in the thread more than 75 times, often turned into phrases like just listen to students or spend time listening to them that sounded by turns or encouraging. So for many teachers, listening to kids was a whole body experience. Nod your head, um, suggest one teacher, uh, one teacher said, while others recommend listening, both your ears, with both your eyes and your ears, or giving it a try with your whole self. Uh, so physical impossibility aside, the point stands, our educators should not push if students are not comfortable with it. Listening more actively sends a signal that you care. And if you can, make eye contact. Sit down next to them, kneel beside them, and ask them questions about what they, what they have going on. I love it. I love it. So listen, talk, and shout it out. So let's go on to number two. Check in and follow up. But social um but social you know, social media there are not enough 
to build true craft beds according to some educators. Now to create more durable bonds with students, you need to nurture a rich dialogue of roots and bonds, asking lots of questions, and critically follow up to demonstrate our effective interests. Mm -hmm. So one teacher does this, she does a great question of the day, and sometimes a silly question, sometimes a more serious question, such as, what do you like about yourself? Other teachers took a less structured approach, touching base, periodical to ask about upcoming events, siblings, uh, chairs, pets, birthdays, students, passions, and so on. But the key, though, it lies in actually remembering little things about their lives and then asking how, and then asking, you know, about a few days or weeks later to say, you know, are the teachers listen, actually listening to them? Okay, so yes, so yes, 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 you guys. Check in and follow up with your students, okay? Let's move on down to number three. Dig deeper, let's dig deeper into our students. Sometimes, of course, kids experience life experience that are hard to talk about, of course, absolutely. And identifying students at that critical junction may be the difference between progress and a lost year. That's why I said a lot of times, you guys, Let's build relationships with our students, okay? So when problems arise, start conversations about discipline with the question, are you okay? Um, so start with that, are you okay? Is there anything that I can help you with? Sort of along that line. And a teacher does this with her students. She wrote in uh, her junior, her junior, her students wrote in journals at the beginning of each day, uh, and she told them that she would not read everything, but if there was something they really wanted her to read, they were to turn down the corner of the page. So, you know, because that means something is very important. I want you to know about this, what's going on with me. So I like that there, I like that there. So let's move on to number four, be responsive. When you know your kids, when you know your students, you can adjust your curriculum to match student interests, provide alternative assessment options for kids based on their preference, and do a better job differentiating at the individual level, okay? So this teacher does this, have a two-minute convo with each kid regularly, ask, how are things going in their lives? What challenges are they facing? Um, you can also try surveys to gather student uh, concerns up more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Systematically, okay? And this is according to a, um, excuse me, to a middle school teacher, okay? Um, and she does student surveys every nine weeks. And when she implements the from her students' feedback, she lets them know that she's doing this because she heard them and they matter to her. So we go way out. So that deserves a hand clap. That deserves a hand clap over there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, yes. And by turning social insights into a tool to build and mold your lesson in classroom environment around student interests, educators, they reinforce a culture of safety and inclusivity where students see themselves representative. All right, so let's move on down to our fifth one, demonstrate, dem demonstrate to them or whatever, um, demo, demo, demo credits. So like any intuition, schools, they are in, in virtually reinforced artificials, power structures lead to environments that feel uh, just, okay. So adjustments in perspective can communicate respect to your students and humanize classrooms. That version of the phrase, treat them like real people. Let's do that to our students. Let's, let's treat them like real people. Let's not treat them like they're, they're just nothing. We don't want that for our students. We don't want that. Treat them like real people. Treat them like real human beings, okay? Including talk to them like humans and treat them as a person first. 
student is second. Absolutely, absolutely. Educators, I challenge you to do that with your students um, for the upcoming school year. Okay. So the dynamics should work both ways. Students need permission to access teachers as a person, um, according to a teacher. And simple gestures like saying you're sorry or sharing personal stories as appropriate can make a real difference. So a teacher shares her mistakes and her dumb decisions and her failures and explain how they, it, it, I'm, I'm not, this is what it says, you guys, okay? Um, and she explains how they all led to where um, she is today, right now. And she fights to be to be human to them. She fights to be the real um, version of herself. Be the best. Be the be you, you guys. Be you. Be authentic. Be authentic. Be your authentic self. As I try to say that, okay. Be your authentic self. And finally, you guys, we have our last six, know when to fold the hill. So it's taboo in a lot of schools, but it really should not be. So years ago, when a teacher taught high school English and history, she would sometimes read the room and call it a day five minutes before, before the period ended. And she would just talk and joke around before the bell, you know, sent everyone scurrying you know, out the door. And she thinks we all benefit from that decision. And she thinks the next day lesson went more smoothly. Hmm. So this teacher right here is not alone. Educator Jennifer Crutches insisted that she is real with her students. So some days she fill the room and no, we are not going to get as deep into content as I want to. And she tells them that it's okay. Another teacher put it a little more colorfully, okay? Sometimes you have to access everybody's body language mm -hmm, and say, screw the lesson, all right? Well, let, let's just screw the lesson, period, okay? Teachers need to be able to exercise that kind of decision and reason without second guessing from other teachers or the administrator. Mm hmm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. I like that. There. So there you go. You got six ways to make your students feel important because we want our students to feel important. Don't we, you guys? Don't we? we want them to feel important? We want them to feel important. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I I preach. I preach on that. A lot of times onto my show, you guys, Thanks for Education. And make sure you guys do check out my show and support me from there. Um, so so yeah, make sure you do that new episode, you guys. It comes out every Friday. So make sure you check out that. All right. So we have to take a break, you guys. And I will be back, you guys. I don't know why I keep saying we, because it's just me here. Andrew is not here. So I we're gonna take a break, y'all go again. But I'll be right back to wrap up the show for today, okay? So stay there, you guys. You are watching The Educator.
back, you guys. So what a terrific show on today, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Now before we go, you guys, I have another motivation information for our black men out there. So black men, please listen up because here we go. I am in control of my life. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We all are. And I am proud of myself. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And as from the Instagram user, Express Yourself Black Men, that you guys should check out his content on all over his social media platform, listen to his podcast. Um, I will have a link where you guys can check it out. So you guys, the first day of June down. Um, so yeah, it, it was a terrific first day of June. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me, you guys, for today. So yes, yeah, so... I'll be back next week, you guys, with another on the episode of The Educators. So until then, you guys, catch us back here next time on The Educators.